welcome to the farm. On the show this week. NSC is found guilty of abuse of dominance by Compact. What precedent does this set for dominant companies and their pricing policies? And just because the CCD comes with an exit option and a short price, that doesn't make it debt, says the Delhi High Court in an important tax ruling. This week, the Competition Appellate Tribunal, or COMPAT, upheld CCI's 2011 order that had found the National Stock Exchange, or NSC, guilty of abuse of dominance. Now, while the tribunal agreed with CCI's conclusion, it differed slightly on the rationale. Will this order change the way dominant entities look at pricing? And has the tribunal decision imposed a new burden on company boards regarding pricing policies? Paiswini Padhyay gets you the story. Three years ago, the Competition Commission of India found NSC guilty of abusing its dominant position in the currency derivative segment. This week, the Compact also ruled guilty but on a slightly differing rationale. CCI had held the relevant market as the currency derivative segment. Compact held that the relevant market should be services offered by NSC independent of the product being traded because a stock exchange does not sell a product. Here, the tribunal relied upon the delineation of the relevant market as per the Director General's report. NSC's argument that the relevant market should be currency derivatives and the OTC market was also struck down. To support its argument, NSC had pointed to several global mergers in the exchange space where the competition regulators had held different product markets as distinct. The tribunal concluded that those were cases of merger, quite different from an abuse of dominance case. In doing so, the compact widened the relevant market definition to stock exchange services. These observations were made by the compact on the facts of this case. It cannot be read as a bright line test. Two, how will this pan out? It is obvious that a monopoly abuse of dominance case will never come up at the same time as a merger control case. So you will always def define the market based on the case before you. So to that extent, there will be small nuances which are different in terms of a merger analysis because remember a merger analysis, you are looking at the market uh, post the uh, merger. But in terms of an abuse of dominance, you are looking at the market on the day of the behavior of the monopolist. So there are nuances which are different and they will pan out differently. But I don't think it can be read as a bright line test. The tribunal may have disagreed with the CCI on the relevant market definition, but it agreed with the regulator's conclusion that NSC was a dominant entity. The tribunal went on to say that NSC remained a dominant entity in the currency derivative segment with only short periods of fluctuation in its market share. It is an undisputed fact from the judgment or the case record that the market share of the parties have fluctuated between 2008 and 2010. And in fact, the market share of MCX in a particular relevant time was much higher than that of NSC in the CD segment. So can we really conclude that NSC was dominant in the CD segment? So if NSC was not dominant in the relevant market of CD segment, then can really we conclude that NSC was dominant at first place because there are three filters in order to determine abuse of dominance. First, it has to be a dominant enterprise. Then it has to be dominant in a relevant market. And then third question comes about the issue of abuse. So if the first two filters are appear, in my view, appears to be pretty controversial, whether NSC was really dominant in the CD segment, then I think the next issue of relevant market and abuse may perhaps not arise at all. The question that begs consideration over here is that the MCXSX actually captured market share very rapidly and was able to uh, withstand a lot of pressure because they had deep pockets of their own. Now, maybe on the facts of this case, uh, the conclusion would be the same, but should it have been considered in terms of the analysis and jurisprudence? To my mind, certainly the power of the competitors in the market is an essential factor that needs to be considered. 
the compact then went on to examine abuse of dominance by NSC. The CCI had concluded abuse by NSC on four grounds. One, predatory pricing, that is, unfair, destructive pricing in the currency derivative segment. Two, past conduct of reducing prices in the FNO segment to oust competition. Three, ability to leverage from other businesses through fee waivers, denial of access interface code, and distribution of software for free. And four, exclusionary conduct of denying access interface code to its competitor. Out of these four, the tribunal focused on NSE's zero price policy for transactions in the currency derivative segment. It pointed out that NSE intended to oust competition by continuing with zero price policy, waivers of admission and deposit fee. The tribunal also noted the absence of any justification of such pricing in the minutes of NSE's pricing committee meetings. If I remember correctly, this is the second case where it has been expressed very clearly that what is doable by a non-dominant player may not be acceptable in the case of a dominant player. So once you know that you have a very high market share and I do not expect that the management of every enterprise would get into a competition assessment by itself uh, even before a case has been brought before the commission to determine whether it is dominant. But a, a, I mean, uh, a rule of thumb would be that if you have a very high market share which has been sustained over a couple of years, then you are definitely more likely to be called a dominant player and once you think you are, then you need to be a lot more careful in what your market conduct is going to be, especially in terms of price or in terms of output. Or, uh, or both. The compact has read a duty and has used the words uh, perplexed and strong words that this should have been considered, the minutes should have been recorded. Now this is a code of conduct for directors and committees which is emanating from the compact. There is a larger problem to this. If you read the yet to be notified section 245.1e of the Companies Act which is pertaining to class action suits, there is a direct onus on the directors and uh, management of the company to be in compliance with law. Arguably, this order seems to suggest that the practices of the committee were not in compliance of the law. So does that open the committee up to a class action suit as well? There are several worrying um, issues that stem out of this because here is a judicial body which is actually making a finding of fact to say that the committee acted in a manner that it should not have or could not have acted under the law. Key to determining the abuse of dominance is the determination of the market. Here the market which has been determined by the CCI and the CCI's both majority and the minority decision has been overruled by Compact. Compact has in fact upheld what the DG had held in its investigation report to be the relevant market and which has been considered by the CCI both the majority and the minority and they actually distinguished the determination of the relevant market which DG concluded and in compact in the appeal the relevant market which was determined by the CCI was actually distinguished and if the relevant market has been distinguished the whole case in my view becomes very weak so how would the penalty be then justified? Compact has also upheld the 55 crore rupee penalty that CCI had imposed on NSC. But it seems like this might not be all that NSC may have to pay in the event of losing this case at the Supreme Court. Because sources tell us that MTX SX is contemplating a compensation claim before the Competition Appellate Tribunal. Will the tribunal be willing to hear the compensation claim while the proceedings are parallelly running in the Supreme Court? the fate of NSC and perhaps what's expected of boards of dominant entities will soon play out in the apex court. In Mumbai, Pais Paniu Pathyay. Well, the last word on this case has yet to be set. Take a break on the form. We'll be back. Just because the CCD comes with an exit option and a short price, that doesn't make it debt, says the Delhi High Court in an important tax ruling. 